Welcome to Trico. I'm Falguni Whedon, welcoming you to Trico's 15th edition. Welcome to Trico. I'm Falguni Whedon, and I'm delighted to have Dr. Samir Pancholi with me here today. Dr. Pancholi, if you can just briefly introduce yourself. So I'm an interventional cardiologist practicing in the United States uh, for 25 years now in a small town called Scranton, Pennsylvania. Um, I'm originally from Ahmedabad. I was born and brought up here. I went to medical school here in Ahmedabad and, uh, and then migrated to the U.S. Uh, I trained at State University of New York and University of Pennsylvania in internal medicine and cardiology and interventional cardiology. And that's what I've been practicing all along. And Doctor, we're, as we said, delighted to have you here today. It's Thank been you. a really exciting morning here at Trico. We've seen some complex live cases. What are your thoughts on what we've seen so far? So Trico has always portrayed a very broad you know, array of complex PCI. It started out 15 years ago, and I've been very fortunate to be a part of it from the beginning. Mm. Uh, it was predominantly a radial access course. We were trying to teach people how to effectively use radial access in a broad sense. And I think we have achieved that goal to a large extent. As you can see worldwide, radial access is uh, becoming one of the more common access sites. Mm. Uh, so now, this year, we decided to switch gears, so to say, and uh, embark more upon predominantly complex PCI with a focus on imaging and emerging technologies such as robotics, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And any messages for some of our young cardiologists coming through the ranks who are either here with us at Trico today or are watching this online? The biggest message is, uh, you know, use evidence-based uh, practice use all the best practices. Courses like Trico is where we portray how one can accomplish uh, very good outcomes with percutaneous coronary intervention uh, by using the tools that are already available to us. Um, it's also important to realize that PCI is uh, a good solution, but there are other important things that, that need to go along with it, such as prevention, et cetera. Mm -hmm. You know, and the most important thing which we heard, or we're probably in the process right now, is to protect yourself. Mm. Uh, take care of your radiation exposure burden, take care of your uh, weight on your spine, et cetera, mm. and uh, work on those things. Exercise yourself, build up your stamina to stand the occupation that you've chosen. Yeah. And you just mentioned uh, precision PCI, OCT. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that technology? OCT is uh, the equivalent of a 4K or 8K TV that people have at their home. You know, we all used to watch TV on a concave uh, screen, black and white, with lines going through, and we we're very happy with it. And we have come all the way from there to an extremely high definition screen that gives you uh, precision to the level of a person's hair on their face. And so OCT represents that level of precision and visualization. And because of that, we can learn more about the vessel, the lesion, and we can customize our technique and our toolbox to match that particular lesion. So it's more about customization of our approach, which is possible with OCT and with actually imaging in general. The one thing I've learned in the last decade is imaging is a very important part of PCI, mm. which so far I was taught to really wing it without it. And I think uh, the more that we do it, the more it's safer for the patient, it's less stressful for the operator, and it greatly improves outcomes. There's evidence-based proof for this. Mm. And continuing talking about technology and precision, mm -hmm. robotics, we have to talk about robotics. Absolutely. 
So the Apex Heart Institute has performed, I think, uh, over 500 procedures in the last two years. It's, mm -hmm. it's the most amount globally. Exactly. In addition, the telerobotics, mm -hmm. the first five cases, sure. again, globally. Mm -hmm. What do you think of this technology? Can it really push us forward in the future? Robotics is here to stay. I think uh, like many other fields in, uh, within the medical field, Robotics, uh, for example, in surgery has made great inroads, has improved precision, has improved the minimally invasive approach. Uh, robotics in PCI uh, ha has always had a particular benefit for the operator. Mm -hmm. And with our research here, I've been very fortunate, by the way, to be involved from day one with the robot at Apex. Tejas and I and Sanjay Bhai, uh, we have had uh, a team, so to say, even though I'm 10,000 miles away, mm -hmm. uh, with daily conversations and conferencing uh, to develop a program which has reached now the world's number one status. Mm -hmm. Not only numerically, but you saw the first procedure live and the well-oiled machine that this lab represents when doing robotic PCI, even uh, creates awe in the minds of the pioneers of robots. So I think robots here to stay. The next phase, predominantly coming from places like Apex where we are researching, is to show a benefit to the patient. Mm. There is a benefit to the patient. We just haven't had enough volume of procedures to learn how to create that benefit. Mm. And I think we are right on the brink of it. You will see in some form of publication in the very near future, and then hopefully randomized proof coming out that not just the doctor, but the patient has a big benefit mm. when it comes to using the robot to perform the PCI. Yeah, absolutely. And just finally, before we wrap up, Dr. Tejas, he's your friend, your colleague. You've known him for a long, long time. Yeah. Anything next for him? What would you like to see him take on next as his challenge? So I've known Tejas since 1981 when I started medical school and he's one year senior to me or one year ahead of me uh, in uh, training. And one thing that Tejas has delivered to the interventional community at large across the world is refinement of techniques to the point where they are generally applicable. You take the example of uh, valvuloplasty, which is where he started out, and he made so many technical improvements that people were able to do it in minor places. Mm -hmm. Transradial access came as a very elite procedure done by very few select, highly skilled operators in the world. And Tejas uh, was, uh, you know, he embraced it in the late 90s. And by the mid 2000s, the world was using it seamlessly without trouble. Mm -hmm. And I think the same thing is going to be happen, happening to robotics. Uh, so I expect Tejas uh, to, to deliver robotics to the world uh, next and then probably more to come. Imaging is our passion, both him and I and his team. We want to bring imaging to mainstream PCI so that no patient undergoes a stent placement procedure without getting a direct look inside the artery. Professor Pancholi, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll let you get back to the exciting program of live cases. Thank, thank you again. Thank you very much. Thanks.